Hey welders, welcome to episode number 34 of Adventures in Welding. Tonight we're going to take old Hazel here, my uh, 17 series flex head torch. You can see I've got a regular, uh, regular head on there. And we're going to replace that. But you said we already done that. We put the gas lens on there, we know about that. Yeah, we're not going to replace it with that. Instead we're going to put on this gas saver gas lens with a nice Pyrex cup. So let's get started. To get started, the first thing we need to do is take apart the front end of our old torch. We're going to take apart the whole torch. Well, the head of the torch. Just because we're going to have to put things back together and it's easier when you've got them apart. You don't want to do this right after you've welded either. Because this stuff gets hot. They're kind of snug. I don't like them coming loose. That's all you need. <coughs> Excuse me. So, there we have the parts of our old torch head. We've got the tungsten, which of course we're going to reuse. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the old collet and the old collet body and our nylon insulator. Cut to one. And our old number seven alumina um, ceramic cup. So those parts, other than the tungsten, we'll put back in the toolbox to use another time. Just sticking it all together so that it can you know stay in one place till I put it all in its proper place later. Alright, so let's look at the parts for our gas saver gas lens. This is for the 17 style torch. And the first thing we have is this little Pyrex cup. Next we have the new insulator. And then we have this call it adapter part with the screens in it. This is the new, I think it's called a jam call it. And our call it body has this nice big O ring on it to seal everything up. Okay, so to put it together, if I can remember correctly from the video, you just pop that guy in place there, and then you screw in the call it adapter piece. Nice and tight. And then this little screen piece screws into the front here. My big sausage fingers don't do well with tiny little things. Now it's got some flat spots there. So we will just give it a little snug up, nothing radical. All 
right, that's nice and tight now. Next, we'll drop the jam collet in from the back, and we'll get our new Pyrex cup ready. Somebody out there just screams, ah, you contaminated that tungsten. Maybe. Okay, and this, you have to push on over the screen and over the o-ring and it seals in there nicely like that and then if you turn it upside down your new jam call it falls out pardon me watch me fall off my stool next so the jam call it it goes back in and we'll take our tungsten with a nice sharpened tip. Not really. Doesn't seem to want to go in there now, does it? That's really tight. That ain't good. 3.30 second. I got the right... Right tungsten. Hmm. Let's try another piece of tungsten. Got a nice piece of a two percent lanthanated here. Oriated back in the box. Let me, well, this new sharpened piece of 2% thoriated goes through here real nice. Must have been that piece of, I mean, 2% lanthanated, that thoriated must have been deformed or something. Rot row raggy. We're going to need the uh, long back cap here. Luckily, I say luckily, boy, I keep everything close at hand. I just hold that. And the beauty of this is you can have a nice long stick out. And it says you can use less gas. Now, let's see where I've got this stick out set at. Got about a half inch of stick out there. And I usually run my uh, argon about 15 CFH. Just check it. Yeah, I'm going to turn that down to about 12. Cut. All right, we're back. We're all set up. I know it's dark. You can't see, so I'm going to shut up. And let's start off with an autogenous stringer beam. I'm zeroing out my machine and here we go. Seems like there's a lot of contamination going on there. I bet you this puddle is going to have a lot of porosity. here. Yeah, that really looks like crap. 
let me get the lens cover off here so you guys can see that. That was at about 12 CFI. That doesn't look like there's any shielding going on there at all. I'm going to go back up to 15 and we'll try it again. All right. Yeah, can you see the uh, end of my tungsten there? That's pretty blue. Let's try this again with our, our flow turned up. Zero out. There's our arc. Oh, that's much nicer. So I don't think it's much of a gas saver. But wow. That certainly makes a difference in the puddle. Look how shiny that is. All right, I'll put you back here. Let's try a couple of different filler materials and see how they come out. Let's see. I've got some 308L stainless here. Let's see how a little weld with that works out. <laughs> I have to come over the camera with the filler wire. Zero myself out. Strike the arc. Get the puddle. There's some puddle. Feed in some wire. This ain't going to be pretty, folks. Because my arm is like three feet away. Paper off. All right, guys, what I've got here are three different filler rods. We've got a steel, silicon bronze, and stainless steel. I'll do three beads next to each other. And we'll see how they all look under that giant Pyrex cup. Here we go. The first one is the, the plain steel. Oh, and a stick to start off with. And taper. Painless. Paper, and bronze.
All right, guys, here we are, and here's our three welds, ugly as they are. This is the first one. That's the mild steel, the ER70S2. This is the 308L stainless, and I guess you can guess that that is the silicon bronze. So, do I like it? Yeah, it provides good gas coverage. Is it a gas saver? I don't think so. I'm running the same amount of gas, but it is giving me better coverage. So, it's a wash. Is it worth a buy? Yeah, it's interesting. That's it. See you next time.